that we have uh, for the year. And first of all, let's say hello to our guests, right? Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. You know, for those of you who have come here uh, before, you know, thank you for your continuous support and interest. And for those of you who you know, come here the first time, hopefully you'll be, you will enjoy what you will be seeing you know, today. Today we have many uh, important guests, but the most important guest, you know what? Do I have to introduce him? Do you guys know who he is? Yeah. I would still love an introduction. <laughs> Jensen Huang, the co-founder and the CEO of NVIDIA, who was recently was known to be the most popular CEO in the States. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, this is the first time for him to join our, our exhibitions. You know, first time for him to see our EVs. And first, uh, first time for him to sit in our new EVs. What do you think about this EV? It's a beautiful car. This is an ideal car for a young couple like Young and me. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? The ideal young couple car. Yes, this is built for young couples. And we call it Model Beast, which stands for beauty and beast. Okay. And it runs so like a wh beast. Which, which one are you and which one is, am I? <laughs> <laughs> it's more of both. <laughs> okay, so uh, we also show you about uh, our exhibition uh, uh, regarding the uh, servers. Yeah, incredible and, technology. Yeah, servers which you are you know, uh, the expert in. And also we have shown you something about our semiconductors, yeah. right? Yeah. What do you think about it? What do you think of it? Well, today, before all of you uh, get to enjoy it, I've already enjoyed the exhibits. Uh, the, the spectrum of technologies that Foxconn has is, is absolutely incredible. Um, and I had the benefit of seeing uh, some amazing technology, f fully integrated cars and integrated platforms um, uh, from, from thermal technology to uh, electric delivery technology to semiconductor technology and software technology that integrates these amazing systems. Uh, as you all know, we are at the beginning of a new computing revolution. The way that we do computing has largely been unchanged for the last 60 years since the invention of the IBM System 360. Exactly. And now uh, we are starting a new revolution in computing uh, with, with, uh, at its foundation called accelerated computing that we had the benefit of pioneering. And it enabled a brand new way of doing software called generative AI. Yes. And all of that can be possible without its foundation of semiconductor technology. And so I was delighted to be here to see all the advancements. You know, Jensen was regarded as the godfather of AI. Definitely he will talk to you more about the AI, okay? But I think, you know, I, I remember the very first meeting after the Chinese New Year, I asked all my top managers into a meeting. In that meeting, I told everybody about how important it is to understand generative AI. It will have big, very huge impact in our daily work. Not just you know, the devices, not just the servers, but our daily work. And I was talking to uh, Jensen about, you know, I remember, you know, when we first had a CPU, it would put a lot of CPUs together, we call it number crunching machines. And then when, we, when I visit your uh, headquarters, I saw a lot of triangles. And that you know, reminds me of, oh, the GPU was a triangle crunching machine. Mm -hmm. But today, with Gen AI, 
the GPU turns itself from triangle processing machines into a token processing machine. It processes a lot of tokens. Neural tokens. Neural tokens, yes. right. And the uh, you know, day before yesterday, we had uh, you know, pre-meetings. And I, you know, from uh, Jensen, I heard you know, from Jensen in person about his view of what the future of AI is. Mm -hmm. you know, the concept of uh, AI factories. You know, I read the uh, articles mm -hmm. uh, in your, your GTC conference, but reading it, it's really, you know, I didn't really get it. But with the short meeting two days ago, oh, I think I got it. But I think it's beneficial for all of us to hear more about you know, the AI factories from Jensen in person. Is that OK? Yes, of course. Um, <clears throat> let me show you a schematic of a cartoon. This is, this is why Young and I. Yeah, let's, uh, let's move the car so that people can see. OK. So this is the schematic of what Young and I are building. <laughs> and and uh, it's a, it's a, I drew it myself, so you, you could, um, you know, please excuse the artistry. Uh, but this, we're at the beginning of a brand new way of doing software. Using computers to write software that no humans can, but these computers have to be extraordinary computers. There are three fundamental ingredients of the generative AI revolution. The first, of course, is the algorithm, the neural network algorithm that allows the computer to learn from its experience, which is data. The second is you have to have abundance of data. Data is the digital version of life experience. Exactly. This is no different than us learning from our life experience. Digital data allows the AI to learn. But in order to learn, you need a powerful computer. This powerful computer is, of course, founded on advanced semiconductors. But the architecture of this computer is completely different than the type of computer we used to use. Yes. And this AI factory, if you will, takes raw material in, which is called data, process it in a factory, an AI supercomputer, running the artificial intelligence neural network model, and it produces, it produces intelligence. This is a factory that takes data input and produce intelligence as an output. Exactly. It's a factory. It's an AI factory. And in the future, every industry, every company will have AI factories. In this particular example we're showing you today and what Young and Foxconn and NVIDIA are building is an entire end-to-end -end system where on the one hand you're building this EV, advanced EV car, this beautiful Model B, with a AI brain inside yep. that allows it to interact with the drivers and interact with the passengers, as well as autonomous, autonomously drive, complemented by an AI factory. The AI factory would develop the software for this car. Yep. This car would, of course, go through life experience and collect more data. The data would go to the AI factory. The AI factory, the AI factory would improve it, the software and update the entire AI fleet. This entire end-to-end -end system, on the one hand, AI factory, on the other hand, AI AV fleet, is what NVIDIA and Foxconn are building. Yes, this great concept of uh, AI factories, you know, it just so happened that you know, we're trying to, Foxconn's trying to convert itself from a manufacturing service company to a platform solution company. You know, the platforms that we are targeting are the three platforms. You know, number one was the you know, smart city platform. Number two is smart manufacturing platforms.
The number three is smart EV platforms. Now I know what can power and what can make, what can make this smart platform happen. Just as the car has an AI brain, the factory also has an AI brain, and that AI brain is the NVIDIA DGX SuperPod. Let me, let me show it to you. Yeah. It's good to see what it looks like. It starts with amazing chips. This is the Grace Hopper Super Chip, the world's first of its kind. It's connected into 32-unit pod with this very high-speed interconnect called NVLink. 32 of them are connected together using InfiniBand, and this represents one super pod, and an AI factory would have many of these. Yes. This is a factory of the future. There will be smart factories that build cars. There will be smart factories that build AIs. Yes. And these two factories will be complements of each other, both of them continuously running, both of them continuously creating value. Right. And the most importantly is that we are building these factories together. Yes, we're building these NVIDIA factories together. And uh, Foxconn is building all this together. And so I'm here, I'm delighted to be here to see all my friends that works with us on these two initiatives, both NVIDIA technology and Foxconn technology on the AI factory, NVIDIA technology and Foxconn technology in the EV and AV cars. Yes. Uh, I'm delighted to be here to celebrate it with all my friends and to announce the expansion of our partnership into these two areas. <laughs> yes, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. And we will be, you know, together we will be, you know, helping out the whole industries to move much faster into this, you know, the AI uh, factory, the new era that's of the right. new AI. And the schematic that we showed, our cartoon, yep. can be replicated to every industry. It can be an AI factory and AV, an AI factory robotics, right. AI factory smart city. smart city, AI factory smart manufacturing, so on and so forth. Right. Yeah, really right. scalable approach. Yeah, very exciting, very exciting. But you know what? With all these ideas with AI, you need to have some hardware yes. to power it. You know, without the semiconductors, you know, the AI probably can do only so much. So the foundation you... of intelligence yeah. is the brain, of course, but the foundation of artificial intelligence is semiconductors. Yes. And in terms of semiconductors, we know, you know NVIDIA was the you know, highest uh, market capitalization company in the uh, 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 semiconductor uh, industry. Thank you. Can you tell us a little bit more about you know, NVIDIA in semiconductors? What are you doing? You know? Well, our work in semiconductors is, is um, uh, pretty broad-based. Uh, most people know us because we've been a graphics chip maker for so long. They recognize us as a GPU company. But today, NVIDIA really is a data center scale um, computing company. Most of the computers of the future uh, that are interesting are going to be data center scale. You want to be data center scale because the density could be high, the yeah. energy efficiency could be very, very high, and therefore we could be as carbon neutral as possible for the Earth, yeah. much more sustainable. So the concentration of data centers is important. In order for us to create these amazing data centers and do computing at the scale that I've just shown you, you need, of course, GPUs, CPUs, networking processors, networking switches, silicon photonics, all kinds of different um, technology, software technology to operate this uh, AI data center. NVIDIA's focus is really to advance these incredible data centers so that we could scale it out for every industry and every single company. Yeah. And so we, we have giant semiconductor design teams, chip design teams, that are basically designing chips that fit into this entire data center. Mm. And so our, our work in semiconductors is broad and deep. You know, the semiconductor they're creating you know, now is about 700 watts a, a piece. And going towards like 1,200, it's, you know, it's going bigger and bigger. 
And in, the, in terms of the data center, the, the rack, the power to the rack on the average currently is about 25 kilowatt hours. And 25 kilowatts, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. ki okay, yeah, yeah. 25,000 25, watts. And right. it's going to 100, 140. Mm -hmm. wow. Now, just to, just to think, a hyperscale, traditional hyperscale and data center scale racks are 10 kilowatts. 10. 10, yes. And now we're moving, now we're moving to 25, as you mentioned, yep. into 100 kilowatts. Right. 10 times the power. But what's amazing is the amount of comp computing density has increased by thousands of times. Yes. And so therefore, the energy efficiency of computing is going to increase tremendously. This is one of, the, one of the most important things we have to do in order to have sustainable computing in the future. We have to accelerate every workload that we can. We have to densify computing whenever we can. And when we do that, we could apply the latest state-of-the-art technologies in power delivery, in thermal cooling, liquid yes. cooling, and yes. other technologies to increase the energy efficiency of data centers. Mm -hmm. You know what? This is a big change, and there, this is also a myth, and also a disruption to the uh, to the data center industries. You know, without you know the advent of uh, semiconductors, this probably would not be able to happen. That's right. Right. Okay. And talking about semiconductors, we have a semiconductor guru here, and who is that. your friend? Okay, so let's welcome Dr. Sang Yi Zhang to be on the stage and say hello to our Let's dear friend. Let's welcome Semiconductor Chief Strategy Officer, <laughs> Dr. Zhang. So, nice so nice to see you. Congratulations. <laughs> oh, congratulations to you. We're old friends from a long time ago. <laughs> right. We worked together a very long time. Right. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. And we would like to you know, see him, see you more. And you know, to share with uh, all our friends about the future of AI. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you we'll leave the stage to you. Thank and you. yeah. Take okay. Care. Okay. See you at Thank the you. night market. At the night market, if you run into him, it's free. <laughs> morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to be here this morning to share with you uh, the semiconductor strategy for Foscom. It's uh, a year ago today, I was here in the audience as a visitor, and I was so impressed and decided to join Foscom one month later. So as after I share with you our semiconductor strategy, if any one of you agree and would like to work with us, please let me know. Uh, my presentation will have two parts. The first part will be I'd like to propose a new business model. We call it system foundry. This is more like a, our long-term strategy. Because uh, electric vehicle is such an important focus for, for Hong Hai. 